Hey folks, today we have the best thrift store score I have gotten in years. Some of you longtime subscribers might remember when I used to make thrift store score videos all the time. You know, back in the, I'd say, early to mid 2010s, somewhere around there, maybe even a little later than that. Well, thrift stores here around here really started to dry up for a long time. And I've gotten a few things, you know, since I've made a bunch of those videos, but nothing that really was huge, you know. Like, this year seems to have been my best year for scoring stuff. But not necessarily from thrift stores, mostly from uh, friends of mine. But uh, today, or today, or yesterday, I guess, when I'm filming this video, was a different story. It's Fourth of July weekend. And holiday weekends, there often is a new batch of stuff at thrift stores. And uh, look at all this. All this. Those records there, these electronics here, and all these videos here. All this from the thrift store this weekend. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. So, where, where do we even start? Oh my goodness. I say we start with the records. So records are kind of a crapshoot at the thrift store. Usually it's everybody's old scratched up stuff nobody wants. But I got a few interesting things here. Uh, if you take a look at this, it's the first recording ever made in Russia by American technical and musical staff and equipment. So they use 35 millimeter film to record this performance. So I guess in a way that's kind of recording history and a bit of an maybe is somewhat of an audiophile thing um, so I thought that was kind of interesting of course musical comedy some others brothers this is I think the mono copy I got two copies of this this is the mono one here's another Smothers Brothers record so plenty of comedy to listen to Atlanta rhythm section so into you I love that song that's the whole reason I bought this it uh, it reminds me a lot of an Alan Parsons Project song, so it's definitely an album worth having. I was kind of surprised to see something contemporary in there, because it's a lot of, like, 50s, 60s stuff, like Lawrence Welk and Engelbert Humperdinck, which, you know, nobody wants to listen to anymore. More Smothers Brothers, musical comedy for sure. There's the stereo version of that same Smothers Brothers record. I don't know if it sounds any better, because it's, you know, comedy. It depends how it was recorded, I suppose. And this is the, my favorite thing that I got. Glenn Miller and his orchestra, original film soundtracks. And this, like the first record I showed, I listened to it, and it seems like it's taken off of the 35mm prints of the, of the various movies that Glenn Miller and his orchestra were in. So this, this is probably the best compilation I have, aside from the, the one that, my, that um, Swingman 1938 blesses bless his soul, may he rest in peace, was involved with that I bought uh, a while back. The one that he did is probably the best one you can buy. But this one is probably the second best one I've heard. Very good stuff. So, records were not bad. You know, I wouldn't call that exciting, but I'd say, hey, that's pretty cool. On with media, look at all these tapes. My goodness. Even just the loose ones like this. The movie 2010. I just thought this tape had something funny on it. Videophonic sound. Ooh, gimmicky. <laughs> of course, there's um, some home movies here, some Memorial Day stuff. I don't know. I mostly pick these up just for the tapes themselves to see if they're any good. Best of Saturday Night Live with Mr. Bill. The original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Those of you who watched this, damn! <laughs> Uh, Silent Running, which looks like some 80s movie. Never seen it, never heard of it. Uh, Star Wars, the original one, A New Hope. So that's a later release, since it actually has A New Hope printed on it. Blue Angels in Razor Sharp, which I guess is a movie with um, the Blue Angels airplane stuff in it. I think that's what that is. I just noticed how upside down this tape is. We have... Pre-special edition Star Wars movies. Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, and over here is the original Star Wars without A New Hope written on it, so that one's definitely pre-special edition. This one might be special edition, I don't know. In fact, we can just look at the back of it here and find out. 
I don't think it is. What's the copyright date on this? 1995. Yeah, I don't know. That's it's hard to say. I'd have to actually watch the, watch it to see. The uh, my favorite Batman movie, the 1989 one with Michael Keaton and Jack Nicholson in it. Don't mess with another man's rhubarb. <laughs> Looks like somebody taped some Star Trek: The Next Generation on this tape, along with. I guess that's the episode. Uh, Encounter at Farpoint, I, 152. Yeah, that's got to be just an episode of TNG. We'll have to watch it and see if that's still on there. Here's an early to mid-90s movie called Gettysburg. Uh, that's a pretty good movie. I've seen this before. It's, it's not bad, actually, so nice to have that. Uh, and these, these just happen to be in there, so I grabbed them anyway because this is Goodwill Outlet where I got all this stuff, or most of the stuff, so, you know, it's all by weight, so adding two extra tapes really doesn't matter. American Pie and Charlie's Angels. Uh, neither of which I really need on VHS, but, uh, you know, it's fun to see if they're still good. Of course, there's the original Star Wars. And the tape that I'm the most interested in, Top Gun Jets. I bet this is going to be cool. And here's another... Uh, home movie type thing. Grandma and Ralph. Whatever that is, but in any case, I'm probably going to end up putting tape over the hole and uh, taping over that. So there you go. That's a bunch of tapes. I usually never get tapes like this at the thrift store. It's crazy. And here we have the electronics that I managed to find. So the ones that were actually in in Goodwill stored themselves were this travel adapter, so just as an just as an example, uh, if I wanted to go to Europe, plug my device, plug my phone charger in there, and then plug that into a European socket. So that's kind of cool. I don't know if this thing's a piece of crap or not, but it didn't cost anything. It's like a dollar or something, so why not? As far as the things that were actually in the store itself. Uh, that's most of this right here. This I, There's an outlet section of the Goodwill store, and then there's the actual part of the store. This, v this VHS rewinder was there. This VHS rewinder was actually in the outlet section. So we'll have to see if either one of these work. So was th this Optimus. Uh, CTR 108. This looks like a mid to late, early to mid 90s kind of shoebox cassette recorder. Uh, these Optimus ones were pretty good, I think, as far as I know. It's it's your typical shoebox recorder. It's got a remote jack, and you know, and this one actually has an aux jack, which I think is nice. It's, it takes C it takes C batteries and takes one of those sort of like half moon power cords. It's not quite a figure eight that a lot of the old school tape recorders did. Didn't have any battery corrosion inside, which was good to see. And, uh... Yeah, there's your catalog number. 300 milliamps. It really doesn't use a whole lot of power. Might do a whole video on this cassette recorder at some point, just because it's nice. The VHS rewinders, I really don't need to make their own videos on. I mean, they're such a simplistic device. You put your tape in. You close the door, it rewinds the tape, the thing pops, sometimes the thing pops up when it's done, and that way you can move on to your next movie uh, while this is rewinding. And uh, when I'm doing transfers, uh, that's actually very useful, so that I can just do that and move on to the next tape while I'm still working. And of course, underneath that, underneath all these, as soon as I get them out of the way. By the way, the VHS rewinders do plug into the wall. They're not battery operated. We have this Sylvania Stereo, which looks to me like it's from the 80s or the 90s. I'm sure a lot of you that are into audio stuff are saying to yourself, why would you pick up a plastic piece of crap like this? Well, simply put, I thought it looked cool. Let me get the flashlight on here. Look inside the cassette decks. Doesn't that remind you of those TIAC cassettes from the 70s that had the metal reels in them? It looks so cool. I mean, look at that. 
I did test this in the store, and the mechanisms all seem to work. Even the turntable mechanism seems to work. And, um, yeah, very, very good stuff. It has one of those overblown graphic equalizers that's literally just bass, treble, balance, and volume. So, you know, it, it's, it's got that, like, cheap stereo charm. Um, I figure we'll, we'll make our own video on this later, like a dedicated video. I didn't get this for that much. I got it for ten bucks. So, really, really not that big of a deal. The one thing I did notice when I got this, if I could prop my phone up, is that the, um, the wires for the turntable were all disconnected. Who knows why? But the cartridge all seemed to be intact there. So, one thing I also noticed is this thing was in the 33 position. It has 45 there. This makes me wonder if this doesn't have an idler drive system. Because it was noisy when, when the mechanism worked. So, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. But I thought it would be a fun stereo to take a look at, so I went ahead and picked it up. I did test both cassette decks. I, uh, when I put my finger on the actual spindle when it's playing, it, did, it didn't feel like it had a ton of torque, so I bet the belts are kind of tired. But they didn't feel like they were completely gone, so I think tapes will probably still play. And it might even have even been that way when it was new, I'm not sure. These, this isn't exactly an expensive stereo. This is like, this looks like, if I, if I was born like 10 years early, earlier, this looks like something I would have had in my room as a kid. And uh, listen to my music on, you know, listen, probably listen to a lot of the radio too dial strings is there it all works uh, the speaker connections on this are underneath which is really weird and they're RCA so the RCA speaker connection gives that away right away as a uh, cheap stereo so yeah not along with this right <laughs> plastic does it pass the dad test not really <laughs> Here are those connections on the bottom, by the way. So what I can do is I can just plug this into a pair of speakers whenever we decide to test it. And the nice part is you can plug in a separate antenna on this. Not every uh, cheap stereo offered that, so that's kind of cool. I've just never seen a Sylvania stereo before, so I thought, that's unique. We should probably look at it. And the PS de Resistance. This Fisher... Studio Standard VCR. Looks to me like it's from oh the mid eighties probably. It's not quite it's not the same silver as like what my Zenith VCR is. But this I like how it has preset channels there. That's kinda kinda weird. You still have to manually set them. It's an old enough VCR for that. So I'm gonna say probably the mid eighties on this one. Uh it's a pretty Pretty big VCR, as you can see. Uh, it even has a little. Ed has even has some hidden controls behind this door, which, which, which you can take a look at there. It's a three-speed model. It's SP, LP, EP. So it's got quite a bit of features. It's cable. The fact that it says cable ready on it seems like a very mid-80s thing too. What it kind of surprised me is that. Uh, up here where you manually set the channel presets, it still has the little screwdriver adjustment for that, for that but the door's missing. How did the screw, how did the little adjustment tool not go away? <laughs> That's kind of, kind of crazy. And it looks like this VCR is probably serviced once in its life at this, at this, uh, location in Upper Darby, Pennsylvania. That's not that far from me. That's like right near Philly. Cool. So... In the spirit of the Maritime Girl, a new VCR to play with. Yay! <laughs> so hopefully this thing works. And the great part is we have some of these tapes like Grandma and Ralph here that we can actually use to test this VCR out and see if it's any good. So we can use thrift store tapes on the thrift store VCR. And hopefully this is a good second non-hi-fi VCR. It doesn't look like it has hi-fi features on it. So hopefully it plays those older tapes um, 
as well as the Zenith does. We'll have to try that out. But, yet again, this will probably get its own video at some point, but I just wanted to show you what I got. All this stuff here. There you have it. There's a nice sweep of everything. Man, what a score. This takes me back to my old thrifting days close to 10 years ago when uh, thrift stores used to be full of this stuff. Now, not so much. I, I tend to see, like, inkjet printers, uh, mini hi-fi systems, like mini stereos that everybody had in the, uh, in the 2000s, iPod docks with a 30-pin connector. You just don't see a lot of this stuff as much as you used to anymore because it's not everywhere like it used to be. But every now and then you get lucky. Uh, I don't go to the thrift store as often as I used to, so it's it's rare that I have good luck like this. But I, I think the holiday weekend worked in my favor here. So Definitely going to have fun watching all these movies on this 43-inch uh, 4K TV. No, I'm just kidding. Probably on the uh, Trinitron up there. But, uh, yeah, very fun stuff. Well, and there you have it. Uh, definitely more to come, especially on the electronics portion of this. Uh, we're definitely going to be taking a look at the stereo and the VCR uh, just to make sure that they work. Uh, probably the VCR first, I'd imagine. The stereo, I need to gather some uh, cables and stuff for since, and make sure that it's even worth saving with that cartridge thing. So, yeah, I'm going to play with the stereo a little bit before I make a video of it, but the VCR we're going to test in real time. That'll be the next video, so... If you want to reach me on social media, those links are down below. If you want to join our Discord chat, that link is down below as well. Have a good one, everybody. Ciao. That one didn't automatically stop. How about that?